Elephants are the largest land animals in the world. Depending on who you ask, there are two or three elephant species. Some classify elephants into three, Asian, African forests, and African savanna or bush elephants. Others classify them more broadly as Africans and Asians. You can tell the species apart based on their physical features. So for example, African elephants tend to have larger ears than Asian elephants, and the ears of African elephants are said to be shaped like the map of Africa, which when you look really closely, I can kind of see what they're talking about. It's pretty cool. African elephants also have rounded heads, whereas Asian elephants have twin doomed heads. So Thailand is home to thousands of Asian elephants. It is reported that in the 1900s, there were around 100,000 elephants living in Thailand, but that number has drastically dropped today. There are about 3,500 domesticated and 3,300 wild elephants in Thailand today. So there are numerous reasons for this decline, including the fact that elephants were historically used in battles. Elephants have, a lot of them, lost their natural habitat due to increasing human population density, and elephants are often poached around the world for their ivory. So even though there has been this drastic decline in elephants' population in Thailand, the animal remains uh, super important to the country and the national identity. So matter of fact, Elephants are identified as the official national animal of Thailand. They have played important roles in Thailand since ancient days. So during the period when Thailand was known as Sam, Sam kings used elephants to ride in the battles. The more elephants a king had, the more status symbol he had. So fun fact kind of related to this is that elephant in Thai is called Chang and the famous Thai beer Chang literally translate to elephant beer. It even has like two elephants on the can. When I learned about this, I was mind blown because I was drinking Chang and never even noticed that there were elephants on the can. Yeah, you can judge me, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, today elephants are a huge part of the tourism sector in Thailand, what many will consider a must do activity when you visit a country. But elephant tourism often sparks a lot of controversy because not all interactions with elephants are ethical. And tourists may accidentally participate in animal cruelty without even realizing it. So there have been many outcries to stop elephant tourism like elephant riding and elephant on the water swimming shows. Nowadays, you are likely to get so much backlash on social media for posting a picture or a video where you are interacting with an elephant. So with all this controversy surrounding this issue, I wanted to explore what makes elephant tourism good or bad. So in Thailand, there are elephant sanctuaries that describe themselves as ethical, but not all sanctuaries that market themselves that way are truly ethical. So how can a tourist tell? Well, according to PETA, a leading animal ethical treatment organization, true sanctuaries never buy, sell, trade, breed, exploit, or profit from elephants. They never use hooks or punish elephants in other ways, even when tourists are out of sight. And they don't force animals who naturally avoid human contact to come in close connection with them. So a few days ago, I visited one of the most popular and highly rated ethical and sustainable eco tourism sanctuaries in Thailand known as Elephant Jungle Sanctuary to learn more about them and see firsthand how a ethical sanctuary operate. So Elephant Jungle Sanctuary say they started in 2014 out of the concern for elephant welfare. They operate in four provinces around Thailand. I visited Camp 5 of the Chiang Mai province which is home to five elephants, four grown-ups and a baby that is about a one and a half, half year old. So they offer morning, evening, and full day tours. I did a morning tour. The sanctuary I visited, they said that the elephants were rescued to ensure the welfare of the elephants during tourist visits. The sanctuary limits the types of interaction tourists are allowed to have with the elephants. So the guides told us we could feed, bathe, and pet the elephants, but we were not allowed to ride them, harm them, or tease them with food. People come to check these elephants out to interact with them, but there's lots of controversy around um, elephant tourism, especially riding elephants and using them in performances and things like that. Um, so one of the things I want to explore is what makes an elephant century ethical. So. They say they are an ethical century in how they care for the animals and how they 
people are allowed to treat their animals. And so I'm going to explore more of that today with the guides. But so far, what I can tell you is that they had a number of rules for us for interacting with the elephants. One of the rules is before you feed the elephants, you have to wash your hands. So you can't just go and feed them. And they had all kinds of uh, rules and things that you shouldn't do to provoke them, such as like teasing them with the food because that gets them pissed off. I don't know guys, they're so big and they're so intimidating. <laughs> they kind of scared me a little bit, a little bit. But I think it's a cool experience to actually see. It's funny because this is the first time I've seen an elephant in real life. And a lot of people think that because you're from Africa, you automatically have seen numerous elephants. It's not true. It really depends on what part of Africa you're from and your exposure to these animals. What makes this century ethical? Oh, okay, okay. 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 We bought the elephant in our sanctuaries. We rescued them from most of them from wood industry, logging camp, riding camp, and circus. Okay. The elephant show. And we here we just make better life for them, mm -hmm. good life for them. Mm -hmm. Because as you see, they only eat, poo, and sleep. <laughs> eat, poo, and sleep. That's the only thing they do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm jealous. So, yeah, that's why. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's good life for them. Yeah, they don't have to work hard like like in the past. From the riding, from the locking car. Uh -huh. So do you allow tourists to ride the elephants? On here we don't. Yeah. You see here. What it no says? No oh yeah, no riding. So what do you allow tourists to do? Uh, here we just like, uh, we allow the tourists to pet them, feed them. Okay. And yeah, that's it. But, the, but after we will like have the time for the tourists to interact with the elephant. But after that, we will also have a break for the, our elephant and also a break for the human. So okay. All right. Thank you. And yeah. how many hours a day do the tourists interact with them? Uh, we do have the half day morning. So half day morning, I would, I would say like, it would be around... Uh, Two hours mm -hmm. from that interest with them. Okay. Yeah, but but we also like uh, make supplement both for them. So we most of the time we also like spend time with them here, and most of the time we spend half up there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So when it comes to feeding, elephants are herbivore, meaning they survive on plants. Elephants at this century are fed uh, plant-based food. Uh, for example, grass, corn hogs, fruits primarily, bananas and watermelon, and supplements to aid their dige digestion. So their supplements are a mixture of natural ingredients, including bananas, which help with their skin and vision, salt for antibacterial properties for their mouth and intestine, rice ginger for the probiotic properties, among other ingredients. So the elephants eat about 20 hours a day and they sleep for four, and they poop like 10 to 12 times a day. So for baby elephants, in addition to drinking their mother's milk, they also eat their mother's feces for about five years. The bacteria in their mother's poop is said to help with their digestion. It was really interesting watching this take place firsthand and honestly a little gross, but um, it's just amazing to see how nature works. Overall, I learned a lot from my visit and from what I experienced, it seems like the elephant at this sanctuary is being well taken care of and it seems like they're in a safe environment. I got the vibe and the impression that the caretakers really do care for the elephants. Now, as far as how ethical the sanctuary is, well, it seems a little bit complex. So they checked some guidelines for what PETA and other organizations like In Defense of Animals provide for determining whether a sanctuary is ethical. So for example, the elephants had companionship with members of their own species. So there, like I said, there were five elephants there. Um, they have a large natural habitat for uh, roaming and that allows them to form natural behaviors. So I observed the elephants swim in pots and I observed them scratch themselves against the ground, covering themselves in mud. PETA says truly ethical facilities are often closed to the public except for certain days. So the elephant jungle century pretty much have tours almost every day or every day I believe. They have morning, evening and full day 
PETA says truly ethical facilities keep visitors at a comfortable distance so that they don't disturb the animals. Visitors never touch the elephants because the centuries exist for animals and not for the tourists. So clearly the elephant jungle century allows for tourists to feed, pet, and bathe the elephants. My overall takeaway from this visit is that a tourist may never truly know whether a sanctuary is 100% ethical because there's so much that goes into this determination and it's quite complex and it's so easy to fall for marketing. But we can get close to ethical as possible by following some of the PETA and um, in defense of animal guidelines or any similar organization. So to do that, we will want to visit a sanctuary that does not have any of these glaring red flags or what these organizations call red flags. So elephant riding, a show where elephants have to perform tricks because oftentimes this means that the elephants have been abused and forced to learn these tricks. A place where elephants are in chains or are not allowed to roam freely. A sanctuary that allows tourists to feed, touch, or bathe the elephants. So what I found also really interesting is that according to In Defense of Animals, sanctuaries that have baby elephants like the one I visited are red flags because baby elephants are sometimes captured from the wild to live in captivity. Others are bred using invasive artificial techniques. So to be really, really clear, super clear i'm not saying this is what um, elephant jungle century does what i'm saying is this was identified as a red flag which i found to be very interesting i have to say for me prior to this visit i had very basic understanding of what an ethical sanctuary is i basically thought as long as there were no performances riding um, as long as the animals weren't in chains they weren't confined to uh you know confined spaces or there were no like obvious cruelty then we're all good and i went into this visit to experience um, that and also to show you guys what an ethical sanctuary looks like and what you should be looking for and then in hindsight putting this video together and doing uh, more research which i should have done before i visited i realized that yikes i don't know so i wanted to be super vulnerable about this and so that you guys can do your due diligence before you visit any of these sanctuaries. So some of the sanctuaries that I have seen that are identified as places that do not allow feeding, bathing, or any of these identifiable red flags in Thailand are the Semboom Legacy Foundation, the Borm and Emily's Elephant Sanctuary, Cheng Hill Elephant Sanctuary, Free Top Elephant Reserve in Phuket. Before you visit any of these sanctuaries and do any of these tours, of course, do your own due diligence. Sites like responsibletravel.com, PETA.com, In Defense of Animals are helpful resources. Unfortunately, due to time factor, I wasn't able to visit another sanctuary, especially one of the ones that I mentioned. But if you do visit one or any other one that you believe is ethical, please let us know about your experience and your vibe that you got from there. Anyway, Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you find it helpful, happy, responsible, and safe travel. I will see you guys next time. Peace out.